Now you all are 2023 batch too. Today is a seminar for 2023 batch. Now did you all start the lessons in school? No, no. Grade 11, no. I think you will be starting in April, isn't it? Some school has started in January, no problem. You all are starting in April, no problem. Now, grade 11, the first lesson is living tissue. Second lesson is going to be photosynthesis. That's how the lessons go. Today, I'm not going to do any grade 11 lesson. That is because in case if I start today, today I can't finish it. No, three hour class, I can't finish it. So today is a free seminar. So anyone can join. So I thought of doing a lesson that we have done already. I'll be fully doing it. So by end of today, you should be fully perfect on that lesson. Lesson is going to be Newton's laws of motion. Have you studied it? Hmm? Newton's laws of motion. Well, I done in school, no? Last year, I can remember. You online. You yes. Uh, so must be you should have done it. First part of this lesson is this is very easy lesson, but students misunderstand. Right. So when you misunderstand it, sometimes uh, when they ask practical question, it's hard to answer. So today I'll be doing many practical and you should be fully perfect today by the end of the lesson today. So as that you take out the tube, uh, first of all, tell me who is Newton? Which fellow is Newton? Uh, that fellow whose head was knocked by a <laughs> apple. Ah, that apple fellow is only Newton. Actually, children, see, Newton not only found laws of motion. Fellow found in a good aka, such huge amount of laws he has found. Cooling law, motion law, not the motion you all think, motion law. A many laws he has found. I think if he has not born, our physics would be only this much. Have you all seen that meme? Physics book without Newton, very small. Physics book with Newton. So actually, he was now if you wanted to kill someone. The first person should be in your list is who? Newton fellow. Because if he is not there, physics is such an easy thing. What a easy, huh? Even grade, in grade 5, you can do A level. That kind of physics is without Newton. This fellow came, ruined everything. So, in O level syllabus, of course, we don't have all the theories about Newton. We have only laws of motion. Laws of motion. Huh? Tell me, uh, fellow introduced how many laws? Of motion three laws perfect ah, what are the names newton's first law newton's second law newton third law that's the only easy part here only the name is the only easy part all the other things fellow has made hard newton's first law newton's second law newton's third law they are the three laws now what the fellow is trying to tell us using these three laws what is he trying to tell us in all these three laws he is trying to tell us about one simple concept that is what? Force. Using three laws, he is trying to tell us about force. Then children, before starting Newton's law, what you need to understand? Ah, what is force? Very good. A pull or a push is defined as what? Force. Uh, using force, what can we do? Now, when I have a chair, when I have a chair, I can push it, isn't it? I can push it. By pushing it, what I am doing? I am trying to move the chair. So I can move a stationary object. Using force, I can move a stationary object. Now let's take a ball is coming towards you. A ball is coming towards you. If you want to catch the ball, what you are doing? You are applying a force. So to stop a moving object also, you can apply what? So you can use force to move an object at rest. Second one, to stop a moving object. Not only that. Now this is the dust I have. This is the shape. Now using force, I can change the shape of this dust. The so-called dust. I can change the shape of this dust. See what I'm doing? I'm applying some force here. So using force, we can also change the shape of object. So what are the three uses of forces? To move an object at rest, first one. To stop a moving object, second one. To change the shape of an object. Clear? Understood? Again, what is force? A push or a pull is called as 
for what you can use forces to stop a moving object to move a object at rest to change the shape of an object ah now the last million dollar question what is the unit of force what is a newton uh, i don't know <laughs> newtons ah what is the unit of force newton but children i think 2019 no 2018 there was mcq mcq number 2 they asked what is the fundamental unit of force the four answers given were what is your answer this is first answer this is your second answer this is your third answer this is your fourth answer fourth answer second mcq huh? just think now you are getting your you know unit of force is what newton but second mcq itself they are asking what is the fundamental unit of force and they are giving only these four options what is your option actually children the answer is two i'll tell the reason when we study newton second law why this answer is correct for newton uh, what you call for unit fundamental unit of force i we can learn it using what second law if you want idea i can give see just tell me you are learned no? Newton second law tells us what from Newton second law finally we have what F equals M minus you have learned that equation no? so force is equal to mass into acceleration mass is kilogram acceleration is m s to the power minus ah then you can answer that is how you can find the answer clear understood so children the main uh, unit of force is newtons other than that fundamental unit of force is what kg m s to the power minus clear then shall we write about force online students those who don't have tutors no issues uh, please write there please write there we'll write question and answer sata pata quickly write force online students those who don't have tutors subheading force under the write down under the write down ah uh, you'll tell me again what is force a uh, push or a pull ah uh, write it a push or a pull is called as force yeah aram a push or a pull is called as force a push or a pull is called as force. full stop next point ah uh, tell me what are the three uses of force yeah to move an object second to stop a moving object to change the shape of an object right there force is used force is used force is used force is used to move an object at rest to move an object at rest to move an object at rest to stop a moving object to stop a moving object to stop a moving object next one uh to change the shape of an object to change the shape of an object to change the shape of an object online students any issues you all put in the chat box huh? to change the shape of an object ah uh, right there unit of force is newton unit of force is newtons unit of force is newtons unit of force is newtons and the fundamental unit of force is and the fundamental unit of force is and the fundamental unit of force is what's the fundamental unit of force kg ms to the power minus 2 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 you all tell me force is a vector quantity or scalar quantity 
force is a vector of scalar um actually vector force is a vector i know it's confusing so to many students scalars and vectors are confusing scalar quantity scalar quantity vector quantity i know it's confusing i'll teach a simple trick to remember this now memorizing is hard no memorizing is hard for anyone memorizing is hard for me of course to memorize alphabet when i was in grade 1 it took one year you all also same a b c d until z it takes usually about one year to memorize the alphabet so we have memorized alphabet isn't it you don't go to memorize anything new we will connect whatever which are coming next to alphabet and t because we have already memorized it so we will connect all the things which are coming later to something that we have already memorized and keep that that's easy no? ah, tell me alphabet s comes first or b comes first s comes first a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o s is first no? so s is first b is second scalar quantities only have magnitude only have magnitude only one thing what is it magnitude vector quantities have two things what are they magnitude and direction here after it on okay scalar quantities s comes first only one thing first means one no only only one thing what's it magnitude vector quantities come second two things what are two things magnitude and direction they tell me force has magnitude and does it have a direction of course yes why if i wanted to move this phone if i apply a force this side it is going to move that side same force if i apply from the other side it is going to move in the opposite direction so you can see force have magnitude as well as direction clear understood right there force is a vector quantity 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 vector quantity now you all have a clear idea about force ah then what is force a push or a pull for what we can use force to move an object to stop a moving object to change the shape of an object what is the unit of force newton if they ask the fundamental unit of force what is the fundamental kg ms to the power minus 2 is force a scalar or vector it's a vector now we all have a very good idea about force now we can start newton's law clear understood right newton introduced as we said before how many laws three laws ah in all these three laws children he is going to define us about force in newton's first law he tells what is force a uh, introduction he gives Newton's second law he is connecting us forces with calculations because in physics what we need to do calculations no? so he need to connect us into the calculation part so Newton tries to connect us into calculation part third one he gives a conclusion to force so it's like a movie he introduces he goes to the climax where he does the calculations last he does the final ending that's all he has designed these three laws of force. then what does newton's first law tells us newton's first law what does it tells us it actually tells us about us newton's first law tells us about us you all tell me let's take today example sunday you all don't have any classes in the morning but today what happened this fellow started a science class it's then what happened usually this time you sleep on 7:30 amma you on the bed you are sleeping but today what you have to do you have to get up and jump do you like it if you are not for me also same no i am sleeping let's take i like to do what i like to continue that sleep do i like to stop the sleep get up and start working no that is what newton tells us using his first law now if we are at rest we like to stay at rest if we are in the bed sleeping we like to stay in the bed sleeping that's what newton told an object at rest likes to remain at rest. if you are sleeping you sleep why are you getting here 
an object at rest likes to remain at rest he not only finished from there now let's take you are watching a very good uh, interesting tv show now watching it do you like to quickly switch it off take the science book and start studying do you like to do that never we never like to do that we never like to do that we are watching the tv even for commercial break we scold the tv fellow no yo nahi exactly at a climax scene he stops put some tv commercial we don't like that because if we are doing something we like to constantly keep on doing it that also neutral goes if an object is moving it likes to move at that constant velocity it doesn't like to stop so what are the two things newton tries to tell us using the first law an object at rest likes to remain at rest an object if it is moving it likes to move at constant velocity again tell me again tell me again tell me what did newton first law tells us an object at rest likes to remain at rest if an object is moving it likes to move in the same velocity same constant velocity again what does newton first law tells us an object at rest it likes to remain at rest if an object is moving it likes to go in the same velocity he added one more scientific word to that to that law he added one more scientific word that is unbalanced force what is it unbalanced, unbalanced force now let's take your sleeping you like to what unbalanced force is your mother she wanted to disturb you isn't it after six she feels when she gets up all the other people at house also should get up because at that time only she has the work of switching on the grinder right she has the work of switching off the fan in our room or or she has the work of coming and cleaning our room all the work are done when when we are sleep unbalanced force until an unbalanced force is applied object at rest remains at rest object which are moving likes to move at constant velocity so once when mother come what happens to your sleep after that however much you try you can't go to that old sleep you can't uh, until an unbalanced force is applied object at rest remains at rest object if they are moving they move at the constant velocity that is what newton told again tell me what did newton tell us now the full thing if an until an unbalanced force is applied object at rest remains at rest object if they are moving they move in the same constant velocity again what did newton's first law tells us until an unbalanced force is applied object at rest remains at rest of the objects are moving they move in the constant velocity again what did newton's first law tells us until an unbalanced force is applied object at rest remains at rest if the object is moving it moves in the same velocity shall we write down now you all write huh? start with until an unbalanced force is applied start from there online students clear online students write a subheading now you all don't have the tutorial write a subheading newton's first law write a subheading newton's first law and now write the law clear no aram right while writing again tell me until an unbalanced force is applied at rest remains at rest if the object is moving it moves in constant velocity yeah shaji me tut is there in the telegram group wait i'll put the link
Yeah, do you all know how to get the Telegram group link? No. Telegram group link. Ah, yeah, it's there, it's there. Ah, no. Nah. Right. Okay. I'll put the Telegram group link in the chat. So, cutes are there in the group. Huh? Right. Again, tell me object uh, until an unbalanced force is applied. Remains at rest. It moves in the constant velocity. Now, this object is at rest. This object is at rest. Now you can see this object is at rest. What object? This box. This box is at rest. Then you all tell me it likes to remain at rest or is it like to, does it like to move until an unbalanced force is applied? Yeah. It likes to remain at rest. Until an unbalanced force is applied, this will remain at rest. Now what does this unbalanced force mean? Sir? What is this unbalanced force mean? Sir? See, now it has weight, isn't it? A box has a weight. Weight of the box is acting downwards. Do you all agree? Weight of the box is acting downwards, right? Weight is acting downwards. Is it balanced? No. Something is acting downwards means this should break and go down. But remember, it doesn't go down because from this table, there is a force called reaction force which acts up. There is a force called reaction force which is acting upwards. However, now you can see one force is acting downwards, one force is acting upwards. It is balanced. Now, what does unbalanced force mean? See, I'm going to apply a force from one side. Unbalanced. To balance it, what I should do? Both the sides, if I apply the same force, it will be balanced. But from one side, if I apply some force, it is going to move. Can you all see? Until an unbalanced force is applied, object at rest remains at rest. The moment you give an unbalanced force, it starts. Can you all see? Understood? So that is what Newton trying to tell. Until an unbalanced force is applied, object at rest remains at rest. Object, are, if they are moving, they move in the same velocity. Uh, actually, I told you all this lesson is a practical lesson. No? So in your exams also, they won't ask the... Sometimes they'll ask the law, but mainly they will connect this question to practicals and ask. So we'll do some practicals and see. Uh, I have a, what we call this chopsicum stick. This is not toothpick. No? <laughs> this is a chopsicum stick. And I have a potato here. Right? Online students also can see. I have a chopsicum stick pen. A stick pen, I have a potato here. Uh, I'm going to insert it about halfway here. And when I tap from here, what should happen? Potato should fold up. Isn't it? That's the usual thing when you tap from here, potato should fold down. That, that's how it should be like when you tap from here, there you go, potato should fall down. But what is happening? What is happening? Can you see that potato started coming up? What's the reason for that? I'll draw it on the board and show. Now you can see potato is there. Initially potato is at rest. Then tell me, does it like to move or does it like to remain at rest? It likes to remain at rest. I am trying to move the chopstick by hitting it on top. I am trying to move the chopstick by hitting it on top. Chopstick will move because we are hitting it. No? We are giving unbalanced force on chopstick. No? But does potato like to move? It remain at rest. Chopstick stick moves. So ultimately, chopstick stick goes inside the potato. Clear. So basically here when I was doing the practical, potato didn't move up. It was at rest in the air. In the air it was at rest. Chopsicum stick started, chopsicum stick started moving down. That's what it happened. So this proves what? Newton's first law is perfectly correct. Clear? Uh, take your tutes. I think first diagram, first diagram we discussed already, pushing a stone slab. Pushing a stone slab is equal to pushing this box. I showed you. You'll just write there. Right there. 
i think on the next page you have online students those who don't have the uh, what you call tutor just write a small point under that examples of newton's first law examples of newton's first law first example i showed you all pushing a stone slab yeah i don't i can't bring a stone slab you know so i have what i have a box just write there pushing a stone slab under that write down stone slab is initially at rest stone slab is initially at rest stone slab is initially at rest so it likes to remain at rest so it likes to remain at rest so it likes to remain at rest the moment we apply an unbalanced force the moment we apply an unbalanced force the moment we apply an unbalanced force it starts moving it starts moving it starts moving in the direction of unbalanced force 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 right uh, chopsticum stick example i didn't put it on the book right so first example is there i will show you all another example uh, online students all of you can see yes all of you can see i'll come in front online students can see no online students can see right right all of you can see so i'll sit somewhere here and do the practical now you can see there is a weight hanged here and there are two strings on top of that also there is a spring on bottom also there is a spring right top also there is a spring on bottom also there is a spring okay now you all tell me this object i am going to make it rest right when i pull the bottom string which string will break is it the top string or bottom string sure is it top string Right, 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 bottom string broke, no? Right, right, right. Now don't come to a conclusion, na. Huh? When we do experiments, we need to repeat it several times. Otherwise, we can't come to a conclusion. Now sometimes we do experiment one time, and we might come to a conclusion, na. Huh? Whenever I pull the string, bottom string will break. We might come to a conclusion like that. Don't come to conclusions like that. We'll repeat it again. We'll repeat it again and see whether again, uh, what you call bottom string breaks or not. we'll see whether again bottom string breaks or not we'll see whether again bottom string breaks or not we'll see whether again bottom string breaks or not i'll put the string again i'll put the string again there you go we'll repeat the practical again i told you now this lesson is full of what practicals in the exams also what you get finally practicals so you need to learn it with practicals So we'll do it again and see whether again bottom string breaks or not. Now these are not any magical strings, ah. Huh? These are the kind of normal strings, ah. Huh? Directly taken from what you call my mother's mana machine. Nothing interesting or important. Right. Again, I have the string. Again, I have the string. Again, I have the same setup. Huh? I have the same setup. Ah, now you all know. Tell what string breaks when I pull it. Bottom string. I will show bottom string. Ah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll do it and see. Now what string broke? Now top string broke. No. See now, first time when I pulled it, bottom string broke. Second time when I pulled it, what string broke? Top one. what is this now now we can't come to any conclusion if you had observed me very carefully first time i pulled it very fast did you see second time i pulled it very slowly there is a reason for it 
when i pull the strings faster bottom string broke first experiment when i pull the string faster when i pull the strings faster which string broke bottom string broke this is fast i pull it fast but as well and when i pull the string slower second time which string broke top string broke when i pull it slow now think according to newton's first law see this object is at rest it like to remain at rest or does it like to move it likes to remain at rest string is connected to the top it is also at rest when i suddenly move it does it like to move then it will break the string and tell hey, you move i want you that's what it happened because suddenly you pull it from rest you can't suddenly come to a motion you are sleeping that's it suddenly you get up and start running 100 meter race can you do can same with the objects object is at rest it likes to remain at rest it doesn't like to break it and come from that state so it is a hey, you you break and go and bottom string go second experiment what i did was i slowly started pulling the string down when i slowly started pulling the string down that means slowly for a while you are sleeping you slowly get up use the phone a little use the whatsapp a little and then get up from the bed again sleep a little that's what i did that's how we usually get up right same thing i did i didn't give a sudden push i slowly started pushing this then the string this string will of course move at that time this string will start move downwards object also slowly starts moving this will also move but what about the top end top end of the box it is at rest i can't make it move it is at rest then what will happen top string will now can you understand object at rest like to remain at rest when you pull it faster also it doesn't come down object at motion likes to move it doesn't like to again come to rest that's why it is moving this is also moving both of them move and move now can you understand why this some, something like this happened right so this is also proving us what newton's first law one more experiment is there one more experiment is there we'll do it and go to newton's second law this is kind of a little different one what is the meaning uh it's like this i have a bucket here normal bucket and at these are not magic can this is science so i have a bucket here i am going to half fill the bucket with water use this water i am going to half fill the water bucket with water now physical student you all see yeah i am really doing it bucket is i am really filling water really filling let's not fully fill it fill half with water you might ask me sir are you going to bath here no no wait i'm not going to bath i bathe in the morning that's a separate story why a stick of water ka in karagina right now look huh? look very carefully i have a bucket of water what i'm why is there that's what i'm worried about right i have a bucket of water what i am going to do is i am going to try rotating it oh, wow. it hits here no i'll come a little front however what i am going to do is i am going to try to rotate it around me in a vertical circle i am trying to what rotate it around me in vertical shape then you all think and tell me when i rotate the bucket of water first yeah you all can go behind <laughs> when i start rotating a bucket of water around me you all tell me now think it huh? bucket is rotating when bucket rotates water inside it will also rotate but it is going in what kind of motion it is going to go in circular motion then it likes to go in what circular motion does it like to stop and fall down newton second law we'll do and see we'll do and see Uh, this can go wrong if it hits on somewhere so you all also be ready for any thing happening here that is me that's going to make you asking 
मैं क्या सोच रहा हूँ correct when i start rotating this it is going in circular motion it should not stop the circular motion why it likes to go in circular motion it doesn't need to stop it it can't fall down you see yeah if it fall down then that's a separate story right one two three there you go you can see what is going in circular motion is the water falling down no why doesn't it fall down because it likes to go in circular motion Does it like to stop the circular motion and fall down? Can you understand? Understand. So this confirms us what that Newton's first law is perfectly correct. We'll keep it here. Okay. Let's write. Uh, no third example. Those who have the tube, third example. Others just write down. Write down second examples. Right. Others, those who are writing in book, write second example. Rotating. Rotating, you know you all have, you all have, you all have, you all have one, you all have, you all have the heading. Uh, rotating a bucket of water. Write an example. Rotating a bucket of water. Around head. Around head. That's kind of the subheading. Rotating a bucket of water around head. Under that, write down. You all also write down. Those who have the tubes also write. Here. 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 Bucket of water is going in. Here, bucket of water is going in. Vertical circular motion. Vertical circular motion. Here, bucket of water was going in vertical circular motion. Then it likes to continuously go in. Then it likes to continuously go in. Then it likes to continuously go in. Same vertical circular motion. Same vertical circular motion. Same vertical circular motion. It doesn't want to stop the motion. it doesn't like to stop the motion it doesn't like to stop the motion it doesn't like to stop the motion and fall down it doesn't like to stop the motion and fall down it doesn't like to stop the motion and fall down right uh one more example is there in the tube uh haggle play football yes no ball is at rest it's hard to hit it right now when we start playing football in the first few days sometimes even our leg almost breaks it's very hard to hit a football why object at rest likes to remain at rest if you want to move it you need to give a hard unbalanced force which gives you a huge pain that's why when you start playing football first few days your leg will almost break but do when you practice it every day then becomes uh, tough enough and legs become very strong enough that's a different story but first few days it's very hard to hit it why object at rest likes to remain at rest on the other hand when the ball goes and falls on the what you call goal goal goal, goal post on the goal post also you can see the net of the goal post goes behind to stop it why object which are moving likes to move in the same constant velocity so it's hard to stop it right we we'll write it also online people just write a example 3 you all wait huh? example 3 kicking a football kicking a football kicking a football they are also newton's first law is applied kicking a football under that write down you all also write under that write down football is initially at rest football is initially at rest 
football is initially at rest. So it likes to remain at rest. So it likes to remain at rest. So it likes to remain at rest. It doesn't like to move. It doesn't like to move. It doesn't like to move. That is why. That is why. That is why. It is hard to kick a fit football. That is why it is hard to kick a. That is why it is hard to kick a. Understood. Then Newton's first law perfectly clear. Then again, tell me what does Newton's first law tells? Until an unbalanced force is applied, object at rest likes to remain at rest. If the objects are moving, they like to move in the same constant velocity. So, what are the examples we saw? Football. Football is at rest. It likes to remain at rest. Does it like to move? No, it doesn't like to move. Water rotating. If it is going in circular path, it likes to go in circular path. Does it like to fall down? Fall down means change the motion. Does it like to change its state of motion? It doesn't like to change the state of motion. String example, object at rest. It tries to or it likes to remain at rest. Then it breaks the bottom string. Here, if the objects are moving, it moves. Then it breaks the top string. Those examples clear? Perfectly clear? Right. Then Newton first law, done. That's it. Clear? Now, Newton second law. Online people write a submitting. Newton second law. Others have, you all have the day. Newton's second law. Newton's second law. Newton's second law. Huh. What is Newton trying to tell using his second law? He is going to define us about acceleration. About what? Acceleration. About acceleration, he is telling two things. About acceleration, he is telling two things about acceleration he is telling two things what are the two things he is trying to tell what are the two things he is trying to tell first one two things he is telling first one listen now very careful listen acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the unbalanced force applied on it what is the first one what's the first one Acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the unbalanced force acting on it. Again, what's the first one? Acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the unbalanced force acting on it. Again, what is the first one? Acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the unbalanced force acting on it. You might ask me, sir, what is this symbol? Directly proportional. This symbol means directly proportional. Now, you might ask me, sir, what is the meaning of directly proportional? It means like this. Whenever when unbalanced force increases, acceleration of the object also increases. Directly proportional. Whenever when the unbalanced force reduces, acceleration of the object also reduces. And uh, what you call uh, directly proportional. True, no? When you have an object, when you have an object, when you apply a lesser force, it will show a lesser acceleration, isn't it? When you apply a lesser force, when you apply a lesser force, when you apply a lesser force, acceleration is less. When there is lesser force, acceleration is less. When you apply a larger force, acceleration is high. That is what he is telling. Very simple theory is there. Acceleration of an object is directly proportional. Oh, sorry. Unbalanced yeah. acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the unbalanced force acting on it. That means when unbalanced force is less, acceleration is less. When unbalanced force is greater, acceleration is greater. That's the first thing. What he tells next is what he tells next is acceleration of an object is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. What does this mean? You all get sentence. When mass increases, acceleration should decrease. There you go. Inversely proportional. When mass decreases, acceleration should increase. Perfect. 
true no when you have a smaller object tiny mass tiny mass small mass then acceleration is greater mass is less acceleration is greater when you have a larger mass acceleration is less when you have a larger mass acceleration is less so actually you don't need newton to make these things even we can make no isn't it these are small day to day life things so he is telling acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the unbalanced force acting on it acceleration of an object is inversely proportional to the mass of the object again tell me what is newton second law telling us acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the unbalanced force acting on it acceleration of an object is inversely proportional to the mass of the object again acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the unbalanced force acting on it acceleration of an object is inversely proportional to the mass of the object clean and clear let's shall we write down right there online people write down newton second law online people write down newton second law under that write the law now you all know the law before writing again one time tell me acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the unbalanced force acting on it acceleration of an object is inversely proportional to the mass of the object right there so it does inverse and direct proportion have the same symbol yes same symbol symbol is same but can you see here the component comes as the denominator so here directly proportional here inverse proportional so you can see it's inverse the component is at the denominator that's how we write inversely proportional symbol is same symbol is same direct means direct inverse means inversely indirectly no one is listening okay Online people write down, huh? Don't go to WhatsApp now. Now, which shall put this to the mind? Don't keep to go home and study. Don't do that, right? Now, which shall one shot put it to the mind? One shot, insert it to the mind. right now listen very carefully now listen very carefully now listen very carefully very very carefully yeah? again tell me what does newton second law tells us again tell me what does newton second law tells us unbalanced force hmm? mass of the object again tell me what does newton second law tells us acceleration of an object directly proportional to the unbalanced force acting on it this is what he tells first second one acceleration of an object inversely proportional to the mass of the object this is the second one first one second one now listen very carefully this is what law tells us see acceleration directly proportional to the unbalanced force acceleration inversely proportional to the mass next i can connect them together and write like this no? acceleration of an object directly proportional to the unbalanced force over mass do you like this directly proportional to the unbalanced force inversely proportional to the mass inversely proportional to the mass so both together i have written as one people now we can treat this almost like an equation this is not an equation but we can treat this almost like an equation then tell me in an equation if you have a equal c over d how to bring d here multiply by d c a into d is equal to c i told you all this one we can treat it almost like a equation then if i wanted to bring m here what i do i multiply it by m there you go m times a is is directly proportional to us but I write it in the other side so it's more nice. F is directly proportional to m times a. 
F is directly proportional to M times A. I told you this is almost like an equation. Is it an equation? No. It's almost like an equation. How to convert this directly proportional sign to equal sign? Very simple. Very simple. Very simple, isn't it? If A directly proportional to B, what can you do is, I'm going to convert this into an equation. Then A equals, you convert directly proportional sign to equal sign and you put a constant nearby. Equal constant times B. What does this constant mean? It's a constant. It can be 1, 2, 3, 4, a number. It can be a number. It's a constant number. It never changes. So if you have proportional expression, how to convert it to equal uh, equation? Put an equal sign and nearby that put a constant. Uh, you all tell me. If P directly proportional to Q, convert it to an equation. P equals K times Clear? This one changed into equal and a constant k. Another one. Uh, T directly proportional to L. Convert it into an equation. T equals k times L. Next one. F directly proportional to M. -A. Convert it into an equation. Equals k times M. -A. There you go. Here, F is directly proportional to M. -A. Then convert it into an equation equals k times m but remember our scientists have done experiments and they have found this constant you can only find this constant by doing experiments huh? whether it is one whether it is two whether it is three that value can be only found how by doing experiments so our scientists have done enough and more experiments and they have found k is equal to one k is equal to what one how did they find it experimentally how did they find it? Experimentally. Experimentally, they have found k is equal to 1. Ah, then write k. k is how much? 1 times ma. Then 1 times ma, do we need to write it? No need, no. Then you can write f is equal to ma. Now, can you understand how the equation f equals ma came? Is it Newton's second law? No. It is a derivation of Newton's second law. You can see Newton's second law is this. This is what Newton's second law tells. Mm -hmm. Newton's second law is what? This. From Newton's second law, we are deriving an equation. What is that? F equals m. I know in your book, these things are not there. Directly, they have written Newton's second law as this. Then they again F equals m. Then you start wondering how the hell this came. You, know, they, you might think, oh, God would have said this. No, no, no. This is derived from Newton's second law. You can see how it is derived. Clear? Understood? So, do you need this? No, you don't need to memorize or you don't need to study. But I'm showing you all because I can't tell. God gave and, gave and told me yesterday. After this, F equals MA comes. I can't tell. That I'm a science teacher. Then I need to show you all how it came. This is how it came. Clear? Understood? So, if someone asks you Newton's second law, even my 22 batch people, sometimes they, they write F equals MA. That's wrong. F equals MA is not Newton's second law. Newton's second law is these two. Acceleration directly proportional to force. Acceleration inversely proportional to mass. This is Newton's second law. This is what? Derivation of Newton's second law. This is we derive it from Newton's second law. Clear? Understood? In your exams also, when they ask, write down Newton's second law. Don't ever write F equals MA. No marks. What do you need to write? These two. This one also, good. don't go and write this one. Write it in word. Acceleration object directly proportional to the under force. Acceleration of an object inverse proportional to the mass. You write it fully in the words. Then if they ask, what is the equation derived from Newton's second law? What you write? F equals M. Clear? Understood? Uh, in that box, write this. Online students also, now you all have written Newton's second law. No? Under that, write this. No need this thing. No need this. This whole thing, you're right. No need to memorize these steps. These steps. Right? But those who wanted to learn science more, you can learn about it. Online students understood? 
online students understood yes everyone 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 understood yes aram nisal prakshana okay others tarunita Miri Gaushal ni okay, right. now online students also need the tute you don't need the if you are not printed no need the printed tute but uh, i'll send the group link i'll send the group link take the group link because they are going to do questions questions are there in the tute so just have at least a pdf with you at least have a pdf with you all uh, in that telegram group you have the what do you call Cute PDF, just have it because we are going to do questions. You have an extra book. Yeah. Uh, Tutes through Zoom chat. Wait a minute. Right, I have sent through Zoom chat also. I have sent the tweet through Zoom chat also. All of you take page number four. All of you take page number four. Page number four. Page four. I'll do the first one look, and then you all start doing. Huh? Now you can see what is uh, first question. Huh? What is the force required to give an acceleration of 2 ms to the power minus 2 to a 5 kilogram mass? Remember, whenever when you get a question like this, now you can see you need to do a calculation, right? This is something like mathematics, right? So you need to give a calculation. Remember, your examiners, they never give you questions where you can directly, when you read the question itself, you can do. They won't they never give you questions like that. They are not that much good. They won't give you direct questions like that. They will connect it to some some unwanted things and only give you. Why? Their aim is to confuse you. But what is your aim? To not get confused. Don't get into that trap. Never get confused when you get a question. They are trying to confuse you, but don't get confused. So you might ask me, sir, then how to not get confused when, a, when you get a question like that? See, these types of questions are what you call uh, calculation-based question. In calculation-based question, what we need is data for calculation when you have those data for calculation you can start the calculation isn't it so when you read a question like this just write down the important data they have given what is the force required to give an acceleration to a 5 kg mass now then mass is how much 5 kg right it's a variety acceleration is how much 2 ms to the power minus 2. These things do before you start a question. You might tell, this is an easy question, no sir. Then I can directly start. This is an easy question, but in your exam, uh, now last question, no, no, it's little, it is, it is, it's little bit different. So when you do those types of questions, it's hard to read the question directly and do. At that time, you need to surely what? Write the data what you need. When you write the data separately and start the question, the question is going to be very easy. You are going to, going to do the question very fast and it's going to be very easy. Now they have given the mass, they have given the acceleration. What they are asking? What they are asking? 
force. How to find the force? What's the only equation we have in our syllabus? F equals ME. Write down that equation. You have one mark. Write down the equation first. Next, substitute the value with the units. With the units, you need to substitute. Without unit, if you substitute the values, no mark. F equals, what is the mass? What's the mass? Is it 5 or 5 kg? You need to write 5 kg. What is the acceleration? 2 ms to the power minus 2. You have marks for this. Even now, let's take here, you get complicated numbers where you can't solve. Let's take, let's keep the final answer aside. For this, you have marks. So write it. Then F equals 5 into 2, how much? 10. Kg, kg, ms to the power minus 2. Now, can you understand the first question I asked? What is the fundamental unit of force? What's the fundamental unit of force? Kg ms to the power minus 2. But this is long. No? It's like an essay. Are you going to write an essay after the numbers? No, no. Then we short it and write F equals 10. This whole thing is shorted as meter. Remember, this is your fundamental unit. Huh? This is your fundamental unit. Why you call it fundamental unit? Fundamental means what? Basic. You can see you got this unit from the basic. Base of this unit is from here. So base is here. From basic, you got this. Therefore, you call it fundamental. But as it is long, you give it another name. What is it? Clear? Understood? This is how you do a question. Do question. Do the first one. Uh, fourth page, page number four. Question number one. Now this is. Do question number two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. All in this format. Huh? All in this format. Mass separately, acceleration separately, equation, substitution, and then the values. Online students, don't waste time. Work, huh? Only five questions. Sata pata work. See what is there. Any doubts?
Online students done. Online paper done. <clears throat> done, right. Right, I'll start discussion. One done, two, three, four, five. No? Two, three, four, five. Right. What is the force required to give an acceleration of 3 ms to the power minus 2 to a 10 kg mass? Right. What is the mass? Tell me. M. What is the mass? 10 kg. What's the acceleration? 3 ms to the power minus 2. What's the equation? Substitute the values. What's the mass? 10 kg. Acceleration 3 ms to the power minus 2. What is your force? 30, you can directly write Newton, no problem. Question number three. Calculate the engine force. They will give, I told you, confusing thing. Engine force. It's also a force, no? Then what's the equation? F equals mh. What is the engine force of a car with mass? Mass is how much? 100 kg. Acceleration? 5 ms to the power minus 2. 5 ms to the power minus 2. What's the equation? F mass is uh, 100 kg. Acceleration 5 ms to the power minus 2. Force is 500 newtons. Right. Question number 4. Question number 4. Calculate the force you need to apply to move your phone of mass 3 kg. <laughs> It should be a really big phone. Mass 3 kg. Mass is 3 kg. Acceleration is uh, how much? 5, no? 5 ms to the power minus 2. F equals ma. Mass is how much? 3 kg. Acceleration 5 ms to the power minus 2. F is how much? 15. Fifth question. What is the resistive force? Force. They ask him what? Force. What is the resistive force acting on a boat of mass 50 kg? Mass is 50 kg. Mm -hmm. 50 kg is very, very toy boat, I guess. 50 kg. Moving on water in which engine has shut down. They are telling some stories. Engine has shut down without fuel with deceleration 2.5. What is deceleration? Uh, negative acceleration then it is also acceleration right acceleration in a negative method that is also what acceleration so here by deceleration what they are giving acceleration acceleration negative acceleration they are giving you can use you can consider the negative symbol no problem here you don't need to consider because here we are finding the force no they are given resistive force Resistive force will surely act opposite to the forward force, isn't it? See? 
if this object is moving forward it will experience a resistive force this board this is trying this uh, what you call table is trying to stop it so it will experience a resistive resistive force will surely act which side opposite to the forward force so resistive force is already opposite they have given the opposite direction acceleration that is deceleration so should you actually consider negative side no need negative side so your acceleration is how much 2.5 2.5 ms to the power minus 2 f equals ma f is going to be mass 50 kg acceleration 2.5 ms to the power minus 2 then force is how much 50 125 125 newtons did you all get 125 newtons those who have any corrections quickly make those who have any corrections quickly make and start doing 6 7 8 6 7 8 Question number 678. Online students, all correct? Any issues? Superb. Right, around, right. Is the board clear? Is the board clear? Yes, clear. Right. Six seven eight. Six seven eight. Yes, Tarunita, right? Check, check. No, no, my name is Kings, Kings Perori. Saturday is the institute day.
Pamai tell me when done. So so tell me. What is special in candy? What is special in candy? What what place? Yeah, usually we come to Dalada Mali Gaga. Hey, you know. No, Where is that? Good place. Is it a mountain to climb? Ah, uh ah. -huh. Uh -huh. Good place. It's good. <laughs> right. Done. We'll discuss. <clears throat> Six, seven, eight. Some practical type of questions, Aliza. Question number six, sir. Question number six. <clears throat> a force of 12 Newton is applied on a body of mass 6 kg. Force is there, mass is there. Right. We'll write force of how much? 12 Newton. Mass is 6 kg. They're asking acceleration. Yeah, in the direction of its motion, find the acceleration of the what? Body. F equals MA. Force is how much? 12 Newtons. Uh, Newtons, I will write in fundamental units, then it's easy. Kg ms to the power minus 2. Mass is how much? 6 kg into acceleration. Kg, kg cancel out. You get your acceleration in ms to the power minus 2. Correct, right? Acceleration is equal to 12 divided by 6 ms to the power minus 2. You can write 2 ms to the power minus 2. This step is not needed if you can solve it directly. Question number seven. Question number seven. Question number seven. It's different. Huh? A bus moving forward with an engine force of 1000 Newton. So what is the engine force? 1000 Newton. Remember, in our studies, we consider engine force doesn't change. Actually, practically, when the cellular accelerates and decelerates, engine force changes. But in our study, we consider engine force doesn't change. So engine force F is going to be, question number seven, engine force F is going to be how much? 1000 Newton. So throughout this question, your engine force is how much? 1000 Newton. Mm. Engine force 1000. Mass of empty bus is how much? You have an empty bus. Mass of empty bus is 100 kg. Empty bus 100 kg. Mm. You have the mass you have the force, they can ask what? Acceleration, we'll see. Question A, calculate the acceleration of empty bus. What's your equation? F equals MA, force is 1000 Newtons, 
Newtons, I will write in fundamental unit, so it's easy. Kg ms to the power minus 2. What's the mass of empty bus? 100 kg acceleration. Kg, kg cancel out. You get acceleration in ms to the power minus 2 kelvin. Two zeros, two zeros cancel out. Acceleration is how much? 10 ms to the power minus 2. Remember, this is for empty bus. Now just think and tell. Think and tell. Huh? Using Newton's second law, just think and tell. Whenever when mass increases, acceleration should decrease. Why? Acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass. Huh? Now what they are telling B part? Mass of a passenger, one passenger is 10 kilograms. 10 kilogram, <laughs> tiny, tiny cutie butt. Huh? Mass of a passenger is 10 kilogram. Calculate the acceleration felt by the passenger and briefly explain the reaction. Okay, right. Mass of a passenger is how much? 10 kilogram. Huh? That is your B part. You have the bus. Bus is already how much? 100 kg. You have a passenger, tiny passenger there. He is sitting there. What is his mass? 10 kg. Then you all tell me, what is the total mass of the system? 110 kg. Now tell me, engine force is going to only push the empty bus or is it going to only push the person inside it or is it going to push both the people? Both together. So engine force 1000 is going to be used to acceleration ma accelerate a mass of 110 kg. So this 1000 Newton is used to accelerate how much mass? 110 kg. Huh. They are asking acceleration F equals ma. What is your force? 1000 Newtons. I will write in fundamental unit ms to the power minus 2. Mass is how much? 110 kg into acceleration. Acceleration is 100 divided by 11 ms to the power minus 2. You get 9.09. 100 divided by 11. 9 times, 9 times 99. Remaining 1. You add a 0. 10. 10 you don't have anything. So 0. 100. 9.09090963. Uh, so your acceleration is how much? 9.09 .09 ms to the power minus 2. Can you see now? Acceleration has reduced. Previous listen, listen, listen. acceleration previously is how much? 10. Now what? 9.09. .09. Can you see acceleration reduces when mass increases? This is not what they are asking. This is the acceleration of the system. No. What they are asking? What is the acceleration felt by the passenger? After that reaction, they are giving. First, they are asking, what is the, calculate the acceleration felt by the passenger. You all tell me, acceleration of the system is this much. Then passenger will also move in this acceleration or different acceleration. This acceleration. Very simple, see. If I keep something, if I keep a marker on top, if I keep a marker on top and I start moving the whole system, acceleration of the box is equal to the acceleration of the pin. That means acceleration of the bus is equal to the acceleration of the person inside. So whenever something is moving inside something, acceleration of the whole system is going to be e equal to acceleration of each and every component inside it. If you take the nuts inside the bus, acceleration is this amount. If you take the seats inside the bus, acceleration is this amount. If you take the uh, steering wheel of the bus, acceleration is this much. If you take the drive, this bus doesn't have a driver, no? <laughs> if you take the driver of the bus, acceleration is this much. Right? So you can see each and every part of the components inside the bus is going to have the same acceleration. So acceleration felt by the passenger is also how much? 9.09. .09. Write a small point there. Under that, a small review like thing right there. Acceleration of the bus 
acceleration of the bus acceleration of the bus and each and every object inside it 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 will be the same will be the same will be the same will be the same true no man when bus is moving at a certain acceleration you are sitting inside it you can't move in a different acceleration then bus will leave you and go right uh, so will be the same uh, question is not done they are asking something else about reaction no what they are asking calculate the acceleration felt by the passenger okay and briefly explain the reaction shown by the passenger due to the above acceleration now think practically you got into a bus bus is starting it is going to move that means it is going to accelerate when bus accelerates forward have you all felt the force behind hmm. what is that force the reaction for that acceleration sometimes when the bus is going to stop do you all go forward have you all felt it you all fall forward why because bus is going to stop you move forward to balance so when now when bus accelerate to balance it you accelerate opposite to that direction but you can't move therefore you are, you will be pushed a little bit behind clear understood right there when bus accelerates forward when bus accelerates forward when bus accelerates forward there will be a reaction force backwards there will be a reaction force backwards there will be a reaction force backwards hence the passenger will be pushed behind 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 question number c calculate the acceleration of five passengers now what happens mass increases furthermore ah uh, tell me empty bus mass is going to be 100 kg empty bus mass is going to be 100 kg five passengers one passenger 10 kg five passenger 50 kg so what is the overall mass 150 kg will the engine force change we consider engine force doesn't change sometimes in your question if they give engine force changes then you need to consider that huh? right so here uh, engine force is there mass is there f equals m force is 1000 kg ms to the power minus 2 mass is 150 kg into acceleration kg kg cancel out 1 0 1 cancel out what is your acceleration 100 divided by 15 ms to the power minus 2 6.67 6 6 that's how it goes 67 ms to the power minus 2 so you can see when mass increases slowly slowly what happens to the acceleration acceleration increases clear understood that's a superb question huh? you can go home and do it again put a star to that question and teach that covers lot of areas uh anybody right in here ali raise up online students if anyone is writing tell me huh? before i write Question number eight. I told to do no. Question eight. If an acceleration of two ms to the power minus two results when a force of eight newton is applied, what they can ask? Mass. Question number eight. Acceleration is given how much? Two ms to the power minus two. Force is given how much? Eight newtons. They are asking the mass. F equals m a. 8 newtons force i will write in fundamental unit kg ms to the power minus 
mass i don't know acceleration i know 2 ms to the power minus 2 these two cancel out what is your mass 4 no? 4 m uh, 4 kg 4 kg got it now start doing question number 9 10 11 before that listen before doing 9 10 11 listen 9 10 11 before that listen what is weight is it a force or is it something else it's a force but when we ask what is your weight we tell uh, my weight is 50 kg huh? is force measured in kilograms no force is measured in newtons mm -hmm. actually children when someone asks you for your weight you should tell your weight in newtons if you are 50 kg you are 500 newtons but if you tell sir i'm 500 newton fellow will get mad right we have got used to this system we have got used to telling ah, what is your weight we tell 50 kg we have got used to that system so we can't change it not on it's don't think only in sri lanka we have this problem anywhere there is an issue like that because now when someone asks you for the weight we in a even in a standard way we tell it in kilogram but remember weight is what a force here we are telling actually our mass but no one is going to come and ask, what is your mass, sir? No, no one will ask like that. People ask your weight, but you give it in mass. So there is a conversion like that happening. But remember, weight should be correctly given in what? Newtons, that means it is a force. If it is a force, can we apply F equals MA? Of course, yes. If your mass is 50 kg, what is your weight? 500. How did you get 500? Gravitational force. Mass into gravitational acceleration is gravitational acceleration same everywhere yeah on earth everywhere it is same it is same but if you go to moon it's different if you go to jupiter it is different because from planet to planet gravitational acceleration will change on earth in o level syllabus we consider it as 10 actually it is 9.8 9.8 ms to the power minus 2 but just see in the exam they give you G is 9.8 ms to the power minus 2. Is it easy to multiply and do some calculation? Too? So for our easiness to do calculation, we round it off to ms to the power minus 2. This is gravitational acceleration on Earth. Now. If they talk about Jupiter, don't use this one. Then they will give you something else. Right? Clear? Now do question number 9, 10, 11.
कॉल फिनिश विल ट्राई विद दिस मार्कर राइट नाइन टेन डबल क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन एन ऑब्जेक्ट मूव एट एट एम एस टू दवर माइनस टू एक्सलेशन फाइंड द मैथ वेन फोर्स इज एट इन द माइंड इट्स एक्सलेशन एट फोर्स इज एट मैथ इज हाउ मच यू कैन डिरेक्टली डू चिल बट If P equals m a, force is eight newton kg m s to the power minus two. Mass is m. Acceleration is again eight m s to the power minus two. These two cancel out. Eight eight cancel out. Mass is how much? One kg. Understood. Got it. Question number ten. Weight of a man on earth is six hundred newton. Calculate his mass. So weight, you all know, it is also a type of force. So you can apply the equation F equals m a. Weight of this fellow on Earth is how much? Six hundred newtons. I will write in fundamental unit kg m s to the power minus two. Mass we will have to calculate. Acceleration is how much? Ten m s to the power minus two. Actually in Cambridge syllabus you know they use nine point eight because for them calculators are allowed right. So in their exam they use that. Uh, right. Mass is how much? Sixty kg. Did you all get? Perfect. Question number eleven. Shall I raise the board? Online people, shall I raise? Okay, na? No? Right. <coughs> okay, right. Question number eleven. If the mass of a person on Earth is fifty kg, just guess then tell me what is his weight? Five hundred newton. Ah, calculate his weight on surface of Earth. But you need to show that huh? F equals m a. F is the weight that you are calculating. Mass of the fellow is fifty kg. Acceleration is how much? Ten m s to the power minus two. From there you can find the weight on Earth. How much? Five hundred newtons. This is weight on Earth. Huh? When he goes to Moon, it will change. When he goes to Jupiter, it will change. Question letter B. Question letter B. Surface of Moon, if acceleration due to gravity on Moon is how much? Ten over six m s to the power minus two. So now what changes? This part changes. F equals m a. Mass is how much? Will mass change when you go to Moon? Your mass will remain the same. Huh? So fifty kg mass won't change. Now what the acceleration? Ten over six m s to the power minus two. From their force is five hundred divided by six newtons. How much? Eighty three point three three. Eighty three point three three newtons. I will write it as W m weight on moon, weight on Earth, weight on moon. So you can see when you go to moon, what is happening to your weight? It's reducing. That's why have you all seen this uh, Neil Armstrong video or any movies when you watch? Uh, not Interstellar. Interstellar they don't talk about. Uh, but however, if you watch any videos regarding moon, when people jump, they go very high and come down. Why? They are almost weightless, isn't it? Here you have five hundred newtons downwards. That means Earth is pulling us down with five hundred newtons. When you go to moon. It is how much? Only eighty-three point three. So the pull towards the surface is very less. So when you jump, you will go very high on moon. Clear? On Jupiter, it's other way. Huh? You can't even jump because their gravity is very high. They are given three times that of Earth. See? Question C. Question C. Question C. Surface of Jupiter, if acceleration due to gravity on Jupiter is three times the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. What does that mean? Acceleration due to gravity on Jupiter is how much? It seems three times the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. That means how much? Three into how much? Three into ten 
m s to the power minus 2 altogether how much 30 m s to the power minus 2 is the acceleration due to gravity on jupiter clear how did i get it they are telling on jupiter it is three times that of earth three times that of earth means three times the acceleration due to gravity on earth acceleration due to gravity on earth is 10 then three times of it is how much 30 this is the acceleration due to gravity on jupiter now you can do the question f equals ma will mass change no how much is the mass 50 right 50 kg into 30 ms to the power minus 2 what is his weight 1500 very large can you see on earth fellow is 500 newton on jupiter how much three times 1500 newtons so fellow can't jump there even it's hard to walk i guess to raise the leg and keep make any corrections those who want yeah arham you can do like that also that also correct but here now i wanted you all to apply the equation and do it so best place to go with the equation so one person is telling now on jupiter it is three times no? 500 you can multiply by three and get this you can get it but uh, here what we are doing is f equals ma that type of questions no so best is apply it and get it okay? sometimes you'll get marks sometimes they might deduct marks but you can check it right you can check it use that shortcut method to check it that's a good method to check three times right question d question d now where they have gone from moon to jupiter now where mass they are going a round trip i guess surface of mass uh, mass if acceleration due to gravity on mass is how much one over five times the acceleration due to gravity on earth what does that mean g on mass is equal to 1 over 5 times g on earth that means 1 over 5 times 10 this is going to be acceleration due to gravity on mass so it's going to be how much yeah ms to the power minus 2 2 ms to the power minus now you can write f equals ma f is going to be mass 50 kg acceleration 2 ms to the power minus 2 so what is his weight on moon uh, mass 100 newtons yeah actually me it is it should be less than earth yes it's less than earth but greater than moon greater than moon it's greater than moon uh, that means actually you can't go to mass and leave no? here 500 they are 100 so if you try to leave there like uh, you need to adjust yourself for the g there g force there okay so g force is very me actually it's almost like moon living on moon so do if we now our generation surely i'm also your generation i'm our generation we can we can get a chance to go to mars for sure before our death we can surely go In another 10 years like just like now initially commercial airlines they were started for whom business people those who have money no? only the rich no? now everyone can travel isn't it within about 50 years of time everyone can travel similarly now me spacex such commercial companies they have opened what you can pay and travel you can pay and travel to space they have started that even there are projects done in uh, space where they are building space hotels so you can go to space and stay there there are hotels there they are building it so it has become commercialized so commercialized initially it will be for business people later we also can travel so one day when you get a chance to go to we can tell that word huh? one day when you get a chance to go to mars you can feel that uh, don't go and jump that's what i mean. don't go and jump because when you watch indian movies <laughs> fellow jumps up goes in there fights the whole fight scene is taken on air he comes up you can do it there you can do it there okay then uh, we'll take a small break 15 minutes break uh come back at 10 45 1 10 45 uh before going quickly tell me what is newton second law telling us acceleration of an object is equations you can do questions these are the types of question you can get 
the Jupiter question, that is the maximum type of question they can ask in your exam. I think that was there in 2019 or something, this type of a question. So that's the maximum type of question they can ask. We have done all types of questions. Okay. Take a break. Come back at 10.45. Have you all come to this institute before? No. You have come. Washroom is there at the end. Right. Uh, however, hurry it end. Online people also take a break. Any doubts? Post me. And uh, if anyone has any doubts to ask me personally, you can contact me. Yeah? Note seven one zero six three double nine one zero. My personal number. Note it down and keep. Any doubts? WhatsApp me, and you can ask. Okay, come back at ten forty-five.
right <clears throat> we'll start again what does newton's first law tell us tells us until an unbalanced force is applied object at rest remains at rest it moves with the constant velocity what's the second law telling us unbalanced force and acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the object that means whenever when unbalanced force increases acceleration increases whenever when uh, whenever when mass increases acceleration reduces okay so all the questions also yeah okay what is the de uh, equation derived from newton's second law f equals m a now we are moving into newton's third law newton's third law newton's third law ah look at huh? what does newton's third law tells us it tells us about pair of forces about what pair of forces he tells every action has a equal and opposite reaction every action has a equal and opposite reaction every action has a equal and opposite reaction this is the law telling us some students misunderstand it like this people think people think people think people think uh, let's take you have a box like this i my action is going to be hitting it some students misunderstand it thinking ah, when we hit this it will hit me wrong that concept is wrong when we hit it it will move it's unbalanced it doesn't hit us back again that's not the concept here that is not action reaction action reaction is defined for pair of forces or you call it couple of forces for what pair of forces or couple of forces now i'm going to say tell some th interesting things which i never heard before which i never heard before but things that can happen but things that can happen right what are these pair of forces remember according to newton every force happens in pairs even force has a pair meant right so that is what newton is telling actually newton was an unmarried person until the end so might be that's why he told every force has its pair or it has its couple that means if there is a force it has a couple to that and that couple is going to be equal in magnitude opposite in direction that is what he is trying to tell that means huh, let's take now you are standing on earth now you are standing on earth you are standing on earth your weight is acting downwards isn't it your weight is acting downwards what did newton tell every force is happening in couples this couple is going to be equal and opposite in direction weight force is acting downwards means it should have a couple or not it should have a couple it should act in which direction opposite direction yes from center of earth towards the person there is a force acting upwards which is equal in magnitude opposite in direction so we have only learned about this no we only had an idea about this weight of a person always acts downwards but we never thought that it will have a couple which is acting upwards yes weight has a couple which is acting upwards this is action this is reaction this is what newton trying to tell us clear if you take a object which is standing uh, on table an object on table let's take this table as object table as a object as b i told you all when an object is on a table there is a uh, force act weight is acting downwards a force is acting upwards that force is acting from a to b isn't it from a to b that force is acting from a to b that force is acting from a to b this should have a couple or not yes it should be equal and opposite in direction that opposite force will act from b to a both are going to have same magnitude these both these forces are called as reaction force this reaction is from a to b upwards 
equal and opposite from B to A downwards. So you can clearly see forces are occurring in pairs. These pairs are going to be action and reaction. They are equal in magnitude, opposite in react, uh, uh, direction. This is what Newton told us. He never told us that when you hit an object, it will hit us back. It will never hit us back. <laughs> Unless it is a human being. It will never hit us back. He told about this action reaction pairs or couple of forces pairs. Is it clear now? Clear. Did you all have this idea before? No, that's all. That's what I told you. This lesson sometimes there are even tiny points can make a different meaning to this lesson. See, this tiny point, it's not included in the books. That's why students try to misunderstand. So never think that when you hit something, it hits us back. No, that's not what he tells. He tells about couple of forces. Clear? Understood? So every force on this earth, does it have a couple? Yes. Engine force has a couple. Resistive force has a couple. Weight of an object has a couple. Reaction forces has a couple. Every force on this earth has a couple. Equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. That couple is what you call as action and reaction. Clear? Another example, see, when I take this object and hit it. See, when I take this object and hit it. I am hitting this object. That means I am applying a force onto this object. Don't you think that it will also apply a force onto my hand? Yes. That's why my hand will pain. When I hit it, my hand pains. Why? When I hit it, it's not hitting me, but it is applying a force onto my hand. Why? I am applying a force that will have a couple which is equal in magnitude opposite in direction. Clear? Understood? When you clap your hands, all the same. Let's keep this hand constant. I clap using this hand. I apply a force from my right hand to left hand. Then what will left hand do? Left hand will apply a force onto my right hand. It's the couple action reaction clear you have a now deep understanding about action reaction clear that's right newton's third law newton's third law uh, what's the law again tell law is very simple what's the law every action has a equal and opposite reaction write it first online students write down heading newton's third law and write down the law newton's third law and write down the law Newton's third law and write down the law. Uh, online students write down a subheading deep understanding. Deep understanding. Deep understanding. Deep understanding about Newton's third law. Deep understanding about Newton's third law. Those have the tutes, it's there. Deep understanding about Newton's third law. Under that right now. Here Newton tells us about. Here Newton tells us about. Here Newton tells us about. Action and reaction pairs. Action and reaction pairs. Action and reaction pairs. Which are simply called as. Which are simply called as. Which are simply called as. Called as what? Couple of forces. Good lesson to do during Valentine's. <laughs> Couple of forces. Which are simply called as couple of forces. These couple of forces are. 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 Tell me. Equal in magnitude. Opposite in direction. These couple of forces are equal in magnitude. Equal in magnitude. And opposite in direction. And opposite in direction. And opposite in direction. Remember, this law is very, this is very easy law. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. But this is more important. That is because 
from this law only so many industry started so many new invention started making of rockets rocket theory rocket science all those started from this law actually when you wanted to learn about rockets you start from newton's third law that means to for a rocket to take off you need what newton's third law i will explain it i'll explain with a small experiment here i have a balloon and i have a nozzle it's just a nozzle it, nothing no magic guy it's also just a nozzle i'm going to blow the balloon yeah yeah now what i am going to do is i am going to release this you all tell me when i release the balloon balloon is going to push the air down then air will try to push the balloon can i do oh no we'll do it again because it's fun we'll do it again i'm going to fill the balloon with air Ah, tell me when i release it balloon will push the air down it has a couple couple is acting opposite in direction then air will push the balloon up method so it's here there you go without the nozzle it will fly somewhere that's why i put a nozzle without a nozzle it will just fly from here that's the best example i can give same theory is used in making rockets as well in rockets rocket fuel is sent out so rocket is pushing the fuel out then fuel will push the rocket up that's how rocket aeroplanes jets same thing clear ah another example i have a balloon blower here i'm going to send air stream upwards what is happening here what is happening here there is is a balloon or ball this ball is pushing the air down then air is pushing the ball up. what is it action reaction theory on life you can you see you can actually see it right feel it a little so now can you understand why uh, newton third law is applied in making machines and all things that we don't see in usual world we are seeing here understood right now you all have a clear idea newton third law so these are just two practicals na just go to youtube and search about newton third law practicals magical things happen magical things happen from that only most of the industries are started and they are made okay shall we write down uh online students just write example online students uh just write example first one first one ready like balloon no balloon taking off write down first example balloon taking off balloon taking off balloon taking off under the right down balloon taking off under the right down balloon pushes the air down balloon pushes the air down balloon pushes the air down inside brackets action that is your action inside brackets action inside brackets action therefore 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 air will push the balloon up therefore air will push the balloon up therefore air will push the balloon up brackets reaction that is your reaction brackets reaction brackets reaction what is the second example i uh, keep that go to the next page for the next page ha uh, uh online students write down example number 2 the second example i showed ball on air 
that was a ball actually i didn't find a ball small ball i used a, what you call this naram 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 giri you can use a ball you can write at home if you have a balloon blower or a hair dryer anything that can pass some stream of air you can use it to do it right there online students example 2 ball on air you all have you all have it ball on air another try down here 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 stream of air is pushing the ball up 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 brackets action brackets action brackets action and ball is pushing the air down 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 brackets reaction brackets reaction brackets reaction and due to the weight it remains at same place and due to its weight it remains at same place and due to its weight it remains at same place and due to its weight it remains on same place right most important part about newton's third law is when we are walking on ground also we are using newton's third law huh? yes see we don't realize it but see when you walk on ground when you walk on ground when you walk on ground how do you walk you don't experience it or you don't feel it because from your very young age you are walking but actually if you think and walk see you are pushing the ground behind isn't it to go front you are pushing the ground behind only if you push the ground behind you can go front see only when i push the ground behind i can go front we don't realize it but actually when we are walking front we are pushing the ground behind we are pushing the ground behind ground is pushing us front that's how we are walking action reaction just try try to push the ground from front and try to walk front you can't walk when you try when you push the ground from front see i can't walk front i'll be pushed behind so it's in opposite direction so if i wanted to go forward i need to push the ground behind when i push the ground behind i can walk forward action reaction clear let's write uh online students write down third example online students write down third example those who don't have the tune you all example 2 no online students write down heading me walking on ground walking on ground walking on ground walking on ground another right down another right down when walking forward when walking forward when walking forward we push the ground behind we push the ground behind we push the ground behind from our legs or oh sorry from our feet from our feet we push the ground behind from our feet we push the ground behind from our feet brackets action brackets action brackets action and ground pushes us forward and ground pushes us forward and ground pushes us forward brackets reaction brackets reaction brackets reaction that's all newton's first law second law third law all are done understood then tell me again what does newton's first law tells until an unbalanced force is applied object at rest remains at rest if an object is moving it moves in constant velocity what does newton's second law tells acceleration is directly proportional to the unbalanced force acceleration is inversely proportional to the 
mass of it. What does Newton's third law tells? Every action has a equal and opposite reaction. Actually, about what Newton is telling, couple of forces. That means if the weight is acting downwards, equal and opposite weight will be acting upwards from Earth. Clear? Understood? That's all Newton's first law, second law, third law down. But in our syllabus, together with Newton's laws, another part is added that is momentum. You need to learn about momentum also in this lesson. Online students write down heading momentum. Momentum. Longer word. Huh? You have another one called moment. It's not moment. It's momentum. 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 Now listen very carefully. Huh? What is momentum? Momentum is measure of how difficult is it to stop a moving object. What, what, what? It's a measure of how difficult is it to stop a moving object. Again, tell me what is momentum? It's a measure of how difficult is it to stop a moving object. You all tell me. Stop a moving object. How, how difficult is it to stop a moving object? Can you give a value to that? When someone tells you, ah, stop a how difficult is it to stop a moving object? Your answer will be, it's hard to stop a moving object. It is easy to stop a moving object. Can you give a value to that? Yeah, uh, we come to that. So actually now, directly we can't give a value. No? So when you hear the definition, momentum is how difficult is it to stop a moving object? When you tell that definition, you can't get an idea about the values. Therefore, in physics, we define momentum as in physics, we define momentum as product of mass and velocity. What? Product of mass and velocity. So what is momentum in physics term? Product of mass and velocity. If I write it as an equation, momentum is P, mass is M, velocity is V, P equals MV. Now you might ask me, sir, this tells us different thing. How difficult is it to stop a moving object? That definition tells us different thing, isn't it? In physics, we are telling momentum is product of mass and velocity. But normally we tell how difficult is it to stop a moving object is momentum. Two are contradicting. No, no, no. Actually, both are same. How? See, momentum is depending on what and what? Mass and velocity. When mass increases, momentum increases. When mass reduces, momentum reduces. True, no? You all tell me, is it easy to stop a small car or is it easy to stop a very large lorry? Car. So to stop a large lorry, it is difficult. So when mass increases, difficulty increases, correct? No? When mass increases, difficulty increases, that means momentum increases. Now we all tell me, when I throw a ball slowly, isn't it easy to catch? It's easy to catch. When a sniper bullet is coming towards you very fast, can you catch it unless it is an Indian movie? You can't catch it. When velocity increases, difficulty increases. That means momentum increases. So that definition, this definition both tells the same story, isn't it? When mass increases, difficulty increases. When velocity increases, difficulty increases. That means momentum is depending on what and what? Mass and velocity. So momentum is equal to product of mass and velocity. Is it clear? Understood. Then again tell me. What is momentum according to normal definition? Measure of how difficult is it to stop a moving object. In physics, we give an equation for momentum. What is it? P equals m into v. Ah. Now think and tell me what is the unit of momentum? Unit of momentum. People, when they ask for units, don't go to memorize the units. Only memorize, memorize the equation. What is the equation? Momentum equals mass into velocity, right? Mass, what is the unit of mass? What is the unit of velocity? What is the unit of momentum? Kg ms power minus. See? Understood? Is momentum a scalar quantity or vector quantity? It is having velocity. Velocity has a direction. Then momentum also has a direction. Then momentum is what quantity? Second one, vector quantity. It is a vector quantity. Whenever when velocity comes in action, the final answer will have a vector quantity because it is vector. 
you can't cancel the direction that direction will be carried here so it's a vector quantity clear understood let's write online students write down a heading momentum under that write down you all have space there you write down momentum is momentum is measure of measure of measure of how difficult it is to how difficult is it it is to how difficult it is to stop a moving object stop a moving object stop a moving object why do i tell it as moving object yeah that's it if the object is rest you are not going to stop it no so already at rest so what you are going to stop a moving object so tell me if an object is at rest what is its momentum zero clear understood right uh, now continue writing full stop continue writing in physics we we define momentum in physics we define momentum in physics we define momentum as follows as follows as follows ah in that block given write this you are also write you know no need to put a block so i'll just directly write Online people, in case if you have missed any notes, no problem. I'll put a you all have completed note. No? I'll put a completed note to the uh, Telegram channel. If all of you are there in Telegram channel, I'll put a completed note to the Telegram channel. You don't need to worry. And any doubt, just call me and ask. I have given my number. You all are free at this time, or do you all want any time changes or anything like that? So free at this time. In case if you all come to physical, you you will be joining the physical class, right? In case if you not able to come to physical class, you can watch it online. But don't keep it. Don't keep online. Come to physical class as much as possible. right now the last theory part for today this is not there in the books but they ask questions from this online students write down a heading relationship between relationship between force and change in momentum you are making a correction force and change in momentum relationship between force and change in momentum force and change in momentum Ah, now look at the board very carefully. Not there in the books, ah, but questions are asked. Listen, ah, people. First of all, what is change in momentum? What is change in momentum? Look at the board very carefully. Remember, change in something means final of it minus initial of it. See, change in vol velocity is final velocity minus initial velocity. Change in acceleration is final acceleration minus initial acceleration. Change in mass is final mass minus initial. Then tell me, change in momentum is what? Final momentum minus initial momentum. Uh, 
final momentum final momentum minus initial momentum final momentum minus initial momentum is change in momentum now i'll write it in symbol momentum is p we very well know it change we give a symbol as delta this triangle is delta don't worry about that symbol it's just a symbol what does it mean change in momentum change in momentum is equal to final momentum final momentum people we already know momentum is equal to what mass into velocity we are talking about moving object isn't it and the momentum are we talking about objects at rest no we are talking about moving object y'all tell me children when an object moves when an object moves if an object is moving will there have, will there any change to the mass happening during the motion mass will never change what will only change only the velocity change mass is always same velocity will only change so final momentum means i can write it like this right mass won't change mass is same only velocity has become final velocity final. then initial momentum means tell me does the mass changes mass is same only velocity has changed initial velocity can't i write like that yes i can write m m can't i take it out of course i can then delta p that means change in momentum is m times now help me final velocity minus initial velocity is it clear understood now just for fun i am going to divide both the sides by time just for fun i can do no? just for fun if you have an equation you can multiply both the sides by same number nothing will happen to the equal sign same number you can divide both the sides by same value nothing will happen you can add both the sides by something you can subtract both the sides by something but if you do it to both the sides no change will happen to equal sign so just for fun i am going to divide both the sides by time now you all just look there look at this and tell me what is this have you all seen it somewhere final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time have you all seen it somewhere under motion under straight line grade 10 second lesson have you seen it yeah this placement under that lesson somewhere did you see this equation final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time is equal to something what is that equal acceleration there you go acceleration then what does this part tells us acceleration ha huh. then change in momentum divided by time is equal to mass into this whole part i can write as what what is ma f equals ma there you go then change in momentum divided by time is equal to what force relationship what i didn't write the heading the heading is what relationship between force and change in momentum see what is the relationship between force and change in momentum force is equal to rate of change of momentum when you divide something by time you call it rate see when velocity divided by time you call it what rate of change of velocity uh, that is acceleration when displacement divided by time you call it what rate of change of displacement what is that velocity so similarly when momentum is divided by time what you call it rate of change of momentum it is equal to so rate of change of momentum is equal to what more equation na huh? this connects us between force time and momentum huh? force time and momentum you might have wondered now when you were doing this lesson momentum under newton's laws of motion you might have wondered why the hell have they put momentum lesson under newton's laws of motion you might be wondered no? now can you understand under newton's law also about what you learn force this is also tells us about what force that's why this is under that lesson clear understood ah then tell me you don't need to uh, remember these steps but always remember change of momentum divided by time is equal to what understood please how did i get it change in momentum is final momentum minus initial momentum mass won't change then final velocity minus initial velocity i bring it out just for fun i divide both the sides by time this part will give us acceleration this part will give us mass f equals ma equation then this is f 
F is there, rate of change of momentum is there, that builds a new equation. Understood? Clear? Uh, you all wrote the heading, no? Relationship between force and change in momentum. Under that, you have a block. Please write this. Online students, do you all understand it? Online students, did you all understand? Yes, right. I'll just write here. I did it just for fun. Just for fun. Divide both sides by time. Otherwise, when you are studying, you might be wondering. Sir, did it for fun. For us now, it is confusing. <laughs> so just write it also. Done. Now take page number eight. Example questions. Shall I raise online students? Okay, right. Ah, take page number eight. First question do with me. Then I'll give, give you all time to do the next questions. Page number eight. Huh? Page number eight. Question number one. What is the momentum of a body of mass 100 kg moving at a velocity 6 ms to the power minus 1? Mass is how much? 100 kg. Velocity is 6 ms to the power minus 1. Uh, momentum, what's the equation? P equals mb. What is the mass? 100 kg. Velocity 6 ms to the power minus 1. What is your momentum? 600 kilogram ms to the power minus 1. Clear? Understood? Do question number 2, 3, 4. Do this and write question number 2, 3, 4.
once done tell me done Which question? Both of Online students, I can put the tube here. Online student, tute is there on screen also. Penis. Hello. We'll do. Question number two. Question number two. What is the momentum of a body of mass 500 kg? So mass is how much? 500 kg. Moving at a velocity 2. Velocity is 2 ms to the power minus 1. P equals mv. What is the mass? 500 kilograms. Velocity 2 ms to the power minus 1. What is your momentum? 1000 kg ms to the power minus 1. Question number three. This is two. Question number three. What is the momentum of a body of mass 75 kg? Mass is how much? 75 kg. Moving at a velocity 3. Velocity is how much? 3 ms to the power minus 1. P equals mv. What is your mass? 75 kg. Velocity 3 ms to the power minus 1. Momentum is 120 no, 220. 220. 225 kg ms to the power minus 1. I give fourth one also. Hmm? Hmm. Fourth one, a bullet of mass 10 grams. Fourth one, mass of bullet is 10 grams. When you have it in grams, convert it to standard units. We very well know when we need to convert grams to kilograms, we divide by 1000. So 10 grams, you divide by 1000, you have it in kilograms. Okay, that means 0 0.01, isn't it? Mass is going to be 0 0.01 kg. What's the velocity? 400. Oh. Now, even though children, bullets are very small, mass is less, but it's very difficult to stop it. Why? Even though mass is less, velocity is very high. 400 meters per second means it's faster than the speed of sound. Speed of sound is 320 meters per second. So speed of bullet, like this should be like a sniper. So this one is coming at a very high. That's why bullets are hard to stop. Otherwise, if the mass is less, you can stop, right? But you can't stop it because velocity of bullet is very high. P equals mv. Mass is how much? 0 0.01 kg. Velocity is 400 ms to the power minus 1. From there, P is how much? 4, no? Kg ms to the power minus 1. Those who want any corrections, quickly make the corrections. Others? Question number 8. And question number 13. 8 and 13. 
remaining questions are for homework you need to do it remaining questions me whatever i skip now do 8 and 13 others check and correct your errors online students any doubts no no right right no okay uh while you all are doing listen today seminar no today seminar so with this now i have done the lesson theories are done we'll have to only do questions so once when question is done this lesson is fully done next class onwards i am starting theory that means your grade level theory i'm i'm uh, first lesson is living tissues we will not start with living tissues i'm going to start with photosynthesis lesson that is second lesson because it's a very short lesson very nice beautiful lesson to start and i will after photosynthesis that is second lesson then i'll do third fourth fifth after that at the end i will do living tissues right for before first term finishes at the end i'll do living tissues because living tissues and second term first lesson biological process of human body they are somewhat connected so more than doing it now it's better to do it at the end because after you do it you can study biological process of human body they are connected no somewhat so we'll do it at the end so next week same timing i'm going to start photosynthesis this month you can join free right for this in this lesson you can join free inform your friends also right physical student you all inform your friends also next week you are starting a lesson huh? not seminar you are starting a lesson whoever wanted tell them to join online students also you can join next week this month fully free so you can join me next week i'm starting photo right i'll put everything to the group you all are there in the group telegram whatsapp group get me your numbers i'll add you all to the group you all have textbooks grade 11 textbook no no that's okay bring a writing book Uh, take down my number you all have it in the tube note 7106399101 then no then finish 8 and 13 right sorry uh you all do you all do uh those who are struck with 13th question just think uh, just listen hey. just just see just see those are struck with 13th question those are struck with 13th question see listen to the 13th question before starting see when you have an object 
you throw it up it comes back again down actually when you observe it very carefully at a certain point that means when it reaches the highest point this object stops see it goes up goes up and stops can you see for a very small millisecond it stops and comes see it goes up it stops comes can you see it goes up it stops come so at the highest point what can you tell about the velocity of this object zero why it stops so what can you tell about the momentum at highest point zero clear now do question number 30 right question 8 shall i start question 8 <clears throat> question 8 momentum of an object of mass 5 kg increased from 25 to 50 then they are talking about what change in momentum can you see what is your initial momentum momentum initial is 25 kg ms to the power minus 1 what is your final momentum 50 kg ms to the power minus 1 mass of the object 5 kg hmm. what is your first question roman number 1 what is the change in momentum change in momentum is what final momentum minus initial momentum what is the final momentum 50 kg ms to the power minus 1 initial 25 kg ms to the power minus 1 what is your change 25 perfect kg ms to the power minus 1 got it roman number 2 now they might ask about force giving a time see ha uh, what is the force acting if the time is 5 seconds you all tell me what's the equation delta p over time is equal to What is your change in momentum? Twenty-five kg ms to the power minus one. What is the time taken? Five seconds. From there, you can find force. Then five is how much? Force is how much? Five newtons. Simple. Okay. From number three. What is the acceleration gain? Now you know the force. From here, you know the force. They have already given the mass. Force is there, mass is there. How to find acceleration? F equals m a. F equals m a. Force is going to be five kg m s to the power minus two. Mass is going to be five kg acceleration. Kg kg five five cancel out. Acceleration is how much? One no? one m s to the power minus two. Did you all get? Question number thirteen. Question number thirteen. An object of mass three kg is projected upward. Ah, upward motion. Mass is three kg. Mass is three kg. At the beginning of its motion, velocity is how much? Ten. That means he is throwing with ten m s to the power minus one. So initial velocity is ten. M s to the power minus one. What's the final velocity? Zero. At the highest point, it's zero. Now, what are they asking? What was what was its momentum at the moment when it was projected? When it is projected, mass is three kg. 
velocity is 10 momentum equals mv mass is how much 3 kg initial velocity 10 ms to the power minus 1 what is your initial momentum 30 kg ms to the power minus 1 did you all get problem number 2 what would be the momentum when it reaches its highest point tell me at the highest point what is the velocity zero if velocity is zero momentum is okay clear homework do 2020 page number uh, nine you have 2020 2018 2017 2016 all the past papers and what are the questions i skipped from momentum i skipped some questions no one two three four done i think five i didn't do no uh this is page number eight huh? page eight five six seven eight i did nine ten eleven i didn't do nine ten eleven twelve no Today itself, go home and do this. Today itself, go home and do this. So, this lesson is fully perfect today. That was my plan. I didn't want to start a new lesson and make you all stuck. Yeah, that's why I started one, one single lesson. Fully done. All the theories are done. All possible questions are done. Now, we have only what? We have past papers to discuss. Do it and come. Me, most probably next week or if I get a chance, we'll discuss. However, next week, what we are starting? What lesson? Photosynthesis next week, this month fully you can join free. May tell your friends, tell your friends also who is there, tell them to join. So next week we are starting a new lesson. Tell your friends. Online people also. Okay, thank you for your company. May mark down the number. Next week, uh, I'll put the link to the telegram channel and WhatsApp group. Then see you all next week. Get on safe. Bye.